Okay, Patrick Royce. So every every Friday on the show, we do uh, a segment called Feedback Friday, where we just we take people's social media questions, criticisms, whatever it is, uh, uh, questions to the Score North app. And I'm gonna I was gonna give this to Judd and Declan during Feedback Friday, but I'd like to ask it to Pat here. Right, a little Feedback Friday for Pat. Mm-hmm. Uh, Micah writes in. I'm a PJ Flex stan. But after this Illinois loss, I'm conflicted. The Gophers football team really hasn't been this successful in my entire life. But at the same time, I don't know if they can get to the level that Iowa and Wisconsin are under Fleck. Fleck is an excellent motivator and recruiter, but at this point, his offense seems archaic. Here's my conclusion, Pat. I think P.J. Fleck's the best coach the Gophers can get. And I think people just have to sort of live with the same... The same record, eight or nine wins with just a different personality coach than the other coaches like Jerry Kill, who also got the Gophers to eight or nine wins. There is no coach that's going to make the Gophers a perennial 11-win team. No, you're, uh, I, I would not argue with that at all. I would also say the whole idea that uh, this is the best coach of uh, this guy's lifetime, the best stretch of Gopher football of his lifetime, He's obviously not very old. He must be about 28 because uh, Mason had about a four year stretch, which was uh, very similar to this. Uh, yeah, first of all, uh, you got, you got to look at a few factors. One is the big 10 West is, uh, is an advantage for him that uh, others haven't had, uh, the whole notion that he's absolutely killing it in recruiting is a bunch of crap. Uh, they, yeah. uh, you know, he, he's he's recruiting is a, a, a little bit higher than Kill's best years. Uh, you know, Brewster's first couple were higher than this. But we, we've been dis- deluded because uh, he signs, he has in the past signed a lot of guys early. And you'd read on November, not signed, but got commitments from. And on November 20th, you would read that the Gophers are sixth in the nation, just like Whalen's basketball team last week was seventh in the nation. I don't know where they ended up, but they weren't seventh in the nation. Uh, so when when they, when push comes to shove, they're 38th, and they're sixth or seventh in the Big Ten, which is better than 42nd and ninth or 10th in the Big Ten. It's better, but it's not like he's out there tearing it up with recruiting because people see – I, you know, I was still hearing stuff last February. Well, they're sixth in the nation in recruiting. No, that was three months ago. Come on, they, you know, the, you look at the uh, look at the updates when the uh, recruits start coming in. But you're right. I mean, he's he's okay. You know, he's above average. Uh, certainly, uh, it, you know, I'd rather have him than most of the guys in the Big Ten West. I guess. Uh, Take Chris, I guess you'd take Ferenc, even though I think that's starting to get away from him down there. And he's he's got the uh, nepotism problem, letting his kid run the offense. And, uh, you know, it, even though they can't beat Bielema, uh, you know, last week, I, I don't think Bielema is going to tear it up there. Nebraska has managed to stay bad. Purdue, he beats Purdue all the time, even though Jeff Brown's got the huge contract. So, yeah, I'd say he's a he's an asset, I'd say. Or you could stop stop huh? in your case and t- take out the E.T. E- perhaps and uh, just stop right there. <laughs> no, I don't. I just – Of asset. You know, I'm just I, he's not – he said it his first day. He's not for everybody, and he's yeah. not for a guy who hates BSers, okay, who hates guys – who just never answer a question that's an actual answer. It's all crap. And uh, that's as as long as he doesn't change that, I'm not going to change my attitude about him. But I I have never said he can't coach. Now, the the other thing is everybody wants to fire Stanford or Sanford or whatever that idiot's name is. Yeah, Yeah, Sanford. uh, They should. But he's running flex offense. All Flex got to say is throw the ball. Throw the ball more mm-hmm. often. Don't run it every play. Mm-hmm. He's running Flex offense. And he's got the same problem as Zimmer, as far as I'm concerned. They When they think they should win, you know, when they're in a game, they feel like they should win. They play much more conservative. Yeah. He's, he's 
you know, they're going to go play pretty good in Iowa because they think they're underdogs and they got to they got to try to do some things. Yes. Even against Illinois, when they get behind 14-0, they're not trying to do anything. And Zim does the same thing. When Zim, you know, that some of those home performances when Zim thought he was going to win the game have been pathetic. And uh, they got the same problem. Open, you know, play the same game. Come on. They're both better on the road than they are at home. And, uh, you know, stop playing so damn conservative <laughs> when you think you're going to win a game. In, and, uh, in game, I, I don't think that in my lifetime uh, of following sports in the state, I don't think we've simultaneously had two as poor in game football coaches <laughs> that those had. Because they both are, they both in game are terrible. Like Flex, awful, and Zimmer is not great. They both don't do a good job. Once the football is kicked off, they they actually far too often become liabilities to what they should be. Isn't it weird too that you know PJ Fleck is a young guy? I think he's still in his thirties. Isn't he like thirty nine? No, early forty nine. I think forty forty one now. Okay, but he's I mean he's a young guy and he is yeah. openly anti analytics. He's one of the rare coaches in any sport under the age of like 43 that is just like, I pay zero attention to analytics and I, I don't think you have to live and die by it like the twins do or die by it I guess like the twins do <laughs> but like to pay zero attention and to sort of be proud of it is weird to me when you're when you're you know late 30s early 40s don't you think analytics though as far as uh in football is a much more poorly defined thing than it is in baseball. And, uh, yeah. And, I think in, fo- I mean, in football, it's mostly about analytics go for it on fourth and one. Huh? Yeah. Know? I mean, football is more about, it's more about like game theory. Like if we go for it on fourth down here, the risk isn't that great because of this. Right. Like, but yes, he doesn't, yes. he doesn't think about that stuff. He's more of a, I feel like we should punt now, or I feel like we should run the ball on second and long now guy instead of, what do the numbers say? And I don't think you can win big if you're if you're a non-power like you know take the top twelve college football programs out that recruit five star guys. So if you're not going to recruit with Ohio State and Michigan, what is your hook that's going to get you into some bigger games? And having a mediocre game manager quarterback and a coach that like mostly pulls the reins back on game day. No, it's just it's not surprising that they lose games like Bowling Green in Illinois. Uh, well, that's uh, you know what my real interest in him is going to be is uh, how it wears with his players. It, that that it seems like you know coming in and crowd surfing with his players and and making himself the focal point of everything, and that's not unusual in college football. I'll, I'll admit that. Yeah. But making himself the focal point of everything. I mean, by the time you get to be a senior, I think senioritis, and now especially with five-year guys, is a real thing in college sports. I've I, I've seen it in basketball for a hundred years. That guys have just, oh man, you know, thirty-two more games, and we're going to play the, you know, the. Uh, 14 months again in the run up yeah. and I, I need to get seen, it. I need to get an internship at a real yeah, job. <laughs> yeah. I've seen just a lot of bored seniors and I wonder if he, if he can, if he wears on you for over five year period. If you well, you know, cra- crowd surfing is a great way to test that out. Yes, it is. Cause it if is. they, uh, if they're bored with you, then you'll just hit the floor. Mm-hmm. That was my favorite tweet last week. Uh, that outside the locker room, there was a, uh, well, there was a sign that said that today's coach crowd surfing has been canceled, you know, so <laughs> that was particularly good. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, that, that kind of stuff is never going to play with me. That doesn't mean he's going to, that he should be derided as a gopher football coach. It's just my personal taste. And, you know, I think he's just, you know, whenever I listen to him, I keep waiting for him to say something of substance instead of it's all on me. You do? And it's all on me, but if I'm asked about anything specific, I will say, no, we made the right decision there. So, you know, I, I won't, I take full blame for defeat, but I really don't, uh, you know, it, like, like most coaches. I, I, it's just, the, it's the whole over the top thing that's my problem with him. I think he's an asset to the university. But I think he's an asset to the Gophers. That's probably fair. Yeah. All right, Vikings. Um, 
Be, speaking of teams that lose when they probably should win, and, and then when all hope looks like it's lost, they, they win. The noble, what do you think uh, they do against the Chargers? The noble defeat against the Ravens where they almost courageously pulled out a victory doesn't look quite as good after oh last God. night when uh, they put up 10 points against the mighty Miami Dolphins. That and was By bothering. the way, I think I was the only guy who was watching last week's Ravens game and said, this is a stupid, undisciplined team, the Ravens. They made so many stupid plays. And Lamar Jackson, for all the greatness with his legs, isn't a great thrower, is not a great passer. And he also makes a fair share of mistakes. And uh, it's a, you know, Harbaugh gets all his credit at being, you know, he's 14 years. It's an amazing for a guy to stay that long. But they're sloppier than hell. The most entertaining Vikings discussions are found here. Well, and, that was weird. And they well, did true. it. They did it again last night. They're a sloppy team. Yeah. And I guess when you play Lamar ball and he does whatever he wants to do, maybe that's going to be it. But that's one of the that's one of the most surprising results of the season to me. That said, I have uh, pretty much thought the Vikings when they went on a, you know, when went on the road to play games like this, they played their best football of the year because they let it go. But I, I can see a real arse kicking coming on Sunday. It's, I, I think they, you know, be, be behind all the, beside all the COVID they had this week and the other problems and uh, Anthony Barr getting ready to take another game off and uh, no Hunter and, and, and no Harrison Smith. I I can see uh I can see this one being high thirties to fourteen or something like that. I can see I can see a twenty point loss on, on mm. Sunday. Speaking of uh, of the COVID problems, did you? I don't I don't mean to uh, to pick on local reporters, but I think this is all in fun. So our guy Chris Thomason tweeted out a couple days ago from I think it was the Wednesday press conferences. Kirk Cousins said that he's been in contact with Dakota Dozier, you know, who's yeah. who's hospitalized yeah. <laughs> and and and. I think aggregators picked it up even as not – he didn't mean it like no, in close contact. He meant, oh, Kirk, give him a call. Yeah, but, it, right. but, but it got picked up like, oh, Kirk's not vaccinated. He's been in contact with Dakota Dozier. Contact has a whole new meeting in, uh, <laughs> in, the, in the world in 2021. Yeah, you got you to gotta watch yourself with that. I believe uh, Chris is a veteran of that. Test. Didn't, he, uh, didn't he run into that uh, – Earlier this fall, yeah, he caught, he, he caught the vid. I think he did. Yes, mm. he had. To, I think he had to cover him from home there for a couple of weeks. So, ah, mm-hmm. uh, it's about, how about? Uh, yeah, I, I just I don't see much hope for him. I think the Chargers. How about my? Well, guy, this this Odell? is the week though. This is the week to run the ball, Pat. Chargers are. This is oh. where the the Vikings watch the Vikings come out and throw the ball forty five times against the worst run defense in the NFL. Now they start throwing the ball. <laughs> Why are they so bad? Do they have a, any no linebackers, no no linemen? Why are they so bad? Uh, they're a bad. I don't know. They're a bad tackling team, according to uh, the stats. But I haven't watched enough Chargers football to give you. A They've full been break very point. erratic too. Very erratic this year, haven't they? They, you know, he, yes. Herbert for all of all the great pub he gets is just. Uh, I don't know. They're just. Uh, they're very erratic. How you knew where Odell was going from the start, though, didn't you? Every the Rams have become the new Raiders, haven't they? They every every reprobate that hits the waiver wire ends up there, right? How did they, they have the money to do this? I like, do, do they, they not have a salary cap and everybody else does? Yeah, they get all these. Every veteran is. I don't. They must be restructuring. They must have a restructuring room there. When you, hey, we can get Odell. We need four of you. Come on in. We got to steal some money. From yeah. You. It, it is. It, it seems like at some point uh, they're going to end up uh, at some point they're going to end up having to pay for all of this, aren't they? As far as cap wise, I, w- I would guess. And draft picks. They don't. Yeah. But that I but I kind of like it. You know, all these other like the Vikings are always worried about. Let's make sure we draft 38 players so that we can ha- have a window and the Rams are like, no, let's win a Super Bowl. Who cares what happens in five years from now? Yeah. One last thing here, fellas. Aren't you proud to live in a country where Sudi Lee, Olympic hero, can uh, be pepper sprayed while standing on the street corner? And uh, yeah, what is wrong? Yeah, what is? Well, I can. 
Yeah, it's a five-letter word, which uh, that begins with T and ends with P. Uh, that is the reason that all this nonsense is taking place in this country. And okay, I'm going to say, as a friend of mine who's also a friend of Donald Trump said, Trump is not a racist. And I said, makes no difference because all the racists think he's a racist. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what we get. And I don't care what anybody tells me. Sunni Lee got pepper sprayed on a street corner by a stranger sit with, with some of our friends who are also of Asian descent because of Donald Trump's four years as president. It is sad. It is sad. And, and uh, that might not be the popular opinion, but uh, that's uh, that's my opinion, and I'm not changing it, and it's ridiculous. It must have popped late in the day, too, because it ended up on, like in the print newspaper, it ended up on page two, and I thought it was a bigger story than that. That feels like a page one or you know, yeah, it not, feels not, like not a, not a, what not the hell is wrong with us. That's what it feels. It's like. not improving too. That's the problem. No. Like it's not, it's not changing. It's not getting better. And here, here's the weird thing too. Canada, Canada has got the same problems. Like you read stories from there and the, 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 the like I always thought, ah, oh, they're a bunch of hockey loving beer drinking. I the whole world's gone absolutely. Canada's nuts. not that much different. I mean, like it's pretty, it's pretty no, close. I always thought they were right? all sort of, you know, just nice, simple people. The Canadians are crazy too. A, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, like what are uh, we doing here? Well, as Dark Star once said to Trent Tucker, white people. Your thoughts. <laughs> That's one of the great lines <laughs> of all time. Amazing. My thoughts right now is, what the hell's wrong with us? Yeah. The ones it's of a, my age. Okay? It's a fair. It's a fair What's question. Wrong? White people. It's a fair White question. White people. Your thoughts. Yeah. Mine aren't really good right now, even though, oh, even though I qualify as one. So. Maybe some self scouting. Does yes. the Twin Cities need a sports columnist like Patrick Royce? He <laughs> yes. also being a great, six, great five, topic. one five. six four six. 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 Hey. They bleep and hate you. Isn't it great? Great. Right here, it, what, what was your, your your line? That's an interesting topic you've got yes, going there. I call them up as uh, today's topic after game three of the 1991 Stanley Cup. <laughs> Midnight to three. Uh, the time I turn in, I'm driving in from the game. Today's topic. Does the sports does the Twin Cities need a negative sports columnist like Patrick Ricey? Dark call him up during the break. He said, "Yeah, isn't it great? They they even hate you. I might do it again tomorrow." He said, "That's amazing." What a beauty! Oh God! All right, uh, negative uh, Pat. We'll uh, talk to you Monday. I got Bethel and St. John's on Saturday, so uh, that might be. They got the one of the worst press boxes in America. That's going to be thirty. All right, be careful. Yeah, be careful out there. Yeah, rickety. All right. Boy. All right. See you, Pat. Bye, Pat. All right. That's uh, Rapping with Roycey, Mackie, and Judd, Scorn North YouTube channel. <laughs> Send all your complaints to Patrick Roycey. Oh, God.